It's a big moment. You've asked for this. You want a way to be able to use the self-integrated hosted runtime to connect to your on-prem SQL instance and load data via a pipeline into Microsoft Fabric. And today that's exactly what we're gonna do on Tales from the Field. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. That's a video where we found inspiration from you, the community, a blog post, working with the customer, or working with the product group, and we share that with you. That's one of those videos right now. Now let's get over that great content. A little about this architecture. First, we've got an Azure VM running SQL 2022, an Azure Data Factory, and a Fabric Lake House. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to install the self-hosted integration runtime on the VM. We're going to register that with the Azure Data Factory and add the SQL 2022 instance as a link service. Then we're going to create a service principle. We need to add that as an admin to the Fabric workspace. And then we're going to add the Fabric workspace as a link service in the data factory. After that, we can create the Azure Data Factory pipeline. We're going to copy over a SQL 2022 table. And we're going to create that table from the files within the Fabric lake house. Let's hit the ground running. I'm in my SSMS and let's look at the database. I'm going to click open this. And what we're going to see is I've got the world uh, the wide world importers tape uh, data warehouse and we're using the fax cell table now i've taken all the spaces out of the columns the demo data set has some spaces you'll need to take that out otherwise adf will have a problem now i'm going to open up the page for self-integrated hosted runtime we're just going to run through this this is going to be the defaults we typically install this on another vm but i'm installing this on my same sql server now we've got this set up this is what we need we need to go over to adf create and get our key so the way we do that is we go to ADF, we go to integration runtimes, we click new. We're going to do Azure self-hosted. Then we're going to go to self-hosted runtime. Uh, we click continue and we're going to name this exactly what it is. So that way we are aware of where we put it. And this is my SQL 2022 VM. I click create and this will give us two keys. I just need my key one and then I can go back over to my VM. I can paste this in and click register. With this, we need to click finish. It'll finish up registering, but I can now flip back over to ADF, click OK. And once it's finished registering, I can click refresh and I can see I'm able to access this. Now we can go to our link service and add our SQL Server link service. Again, it's going to be a SQL Server object. Uh, we're going to come in here and I'm going to call this again exactly what it is, SQL 2022 instance, because I want to keep my naming convention simple. We change this to the runtime we just created. And I'm going to use SQL authentication, but you could use Windows. You could put this in a key vault. Again, I'm keeping this really simple. Um, I'm going to test this, validate that my connection works. Uh, there we go. We're good to go. We click Create. We've got this. Now we need to create our link service for Fabric. So I'm in Enter ID, and I've got my service account. I'm going to come over to my Fabric workspace. I'm going to click Add Person or Group, and I'm going to add that. Uh, it was kind of quick. You may have missed it, but it's bball-msft fabric, Microsoft fabric. Again, I want to keep this nice and simple. I'm adding it as an admin. That's important because it needs to access all the underlying resources so I can write this to the different levels of data I would like. I'm going to come back in and there's two big things we need. We need the application ID, the client ID, and then we're going to go to certificates and secrets, and we're going to create a new secret. Uh, I'm just going to call this something simple like test connect and we've got options for when this will expire. I'm going to go 90 days because I'm tearing this down after I'm done with this demo. The value, this is the only time you get to get this. So make sure you get this. This is where we'd add it to our key vault if we want to add it to our key vault. Uh, for myself, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select the link service of Microsoft Fabric. Click continue. Uh, now there's some sensitive information I'm going to blur out and you'll notice when you add this that that's the case. I'm going to name this uh, Worldwide Lake House because I've got a Worldwide Importers Lake House that I've created. Um, I'm going to leave the Azure Auto Resolve runtime because we're going to talk in Azure. I'm going to select my Fabric Workspace name, my Lake House name, and then I need to paste in the service principle ID and then the key we created. Test the connection. We're successful. 
There we go. We've connected to SQL. We've connected to Fabric. So now we can move on to creating our copy pipeline. This is going to be a very simple copy pipeline. We could do a dynamic one, uh, but keep in mind, we've got videos on that on the channel. But the first time through, I want to make it really easy. So I'm just going to grab a pipeline and I'm going to grab one copy data activity. I'm going to keep the naming convention very simple for this uh, to say exactly what I'm doing with this pipeline. And again, we could do a for each loop. We could get metadata. We could uh, push this data over in a dynamic fashion if we wanted to get the entire database. But one of the things I want to do is the first time around, keep it really, really simple. Now that we've named this, we've got our copy data is SQL to fabric. I'm going to go to my source. I'm going to click new, and this is where I'm going to select the SQL server object. Now we've already created our link service, so it's just a matter of me titling this. Um, again, if this was dynamic, we'd make a dynamic uh, data set, but I'm going to call it fact cells. Uh, I'm going to select my linked instance, and then I'm going to get the fact.cells table. Now that I've got this, uh, everything looks good. And I'm calling it fact cells, but it's fact cell. You get the drift, right? Uh, I'm going to click OK. Now we've got this set up. We've got our source. Now we need our sync. So I'm going to come back over. I'm going to click New. I'm going to type in Microsoft Fabric. Two objects are going to come up, files and tables. We'll get to tables in a minute. We want files for right now. Click Continue, and then I'm going to select Parquet. So when I select Parquet, again, I'm naming this exactly what it is, Fact Cells Parquet. But if we were making this dynamic, this would be where we make this name dynamic. We'd also be using expressions to um, add what the underlying objects are. I'm already created a folder structure on my one lake. This is connected to it just fine. I'm going to raw import, and then I've actually got a folder for fact sale. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to click OK. I'm not specifying a file name here. That's what I would typically do in the expression. Uh, but in this case, this is everything we need. I'm going to say preserve hierarchy because I need to select something for copy behavior, but this is a relational database. There, there's no hierarchy for me to really preserve. It's going to be fine. I click debug, close the properties window. Um, this takes a little while to run, but it's a small table. This is going to take about a total of 17 seconds. Keep in mind, my network capabilities have already been set up for the VM to Azure. Um, that's one thing we need. OK, so it's completed. We're back over in Microsoft Fabric. There's my data magic, right? OK, so I load the tables, and I can just say new table. I can right click on the Parquet file itself. Now, even though I'm going to camel case this, uh, it doesn't like it. And so it's going to make it all lowercase. Uh, but it will very quickly, a little more magic, read it in as my fact sales table. But what if I want to do this programmatically? Let's open up a notebook and show how simple this is. We basically need two cells, and we'd be able to run this. Uh, again, if it's dynamic, we might need to do it a little bit differently. Uh, but I can open up files, import fact cells. I can see the file parquet. I can right click and say, Load to Spark. Two lines right there. I've got my spark.read, and then I've got displaying my data frame. This is loaded as a data frame. There's my table. And then very easily, I just need to add the code. A data frame, write, format, delta, save, tables, fact, sales, two. I run this. And it doesn't auto refresh for me. I'm going to need to go up to tables and I'm going to need to click on the refresh. I do that. A little more magic. Uh, we got our fact sales too. I come over to my lake house. I click on it. There's my data. And there's the promise of fabric. So what do we cover? Well, we covered a lot. We covered how we take a VM running SQL Server 2022 how we actually, its remember the network connectivity is already in place, how we connect to an Azure data factory using a self-integrated hosted runtime, and then how we import that data into our lake house in Microsoft Fabric. Now, we imported as files. I told you I'd get back to tables. The one thing I want to note about tables is that right now, it's on the roadmap. We'll have it, I believe, this quarter, but we can't yet create tables using T-SQL in our lake house via this T-SQL endpoint. You have to create it via Spark data frame. So you're going to have to ingest those files before you can create the table. Once you've created the table and you forklift that data over, if you're looking at doing some type of incremental load, then we can set up an incremental load directly to the table. So sound off. You know where we like to keep this going down in the comments. Is there anything you didn't understand? Anything you'd like to see? We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us from Tales from the Field. Uh, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Wake up.
Yeah, it's gonna be a good